Hey guys, Henning and Morton from Flip Normals here. In this video, we are going to take a look at how we can really supercharge Blender. This involves changing some defaults, uh, really when it comes to the interface, some user experience settings, uh, some general preferences, and then setting, setting up some hotkeys as well. This setup here is really saving me a lot of time on my everyday, and we are sharing this with you as well. So if you don't want to, if you don't want to follow along and do all of the, the settings, you can also just download this from the link in the description as well. This has installed instructions and you can simply just load in the file, go to file uh, defaults and just save that as a startup file. That is the exact same one we have now. So it looks very similar, but there are a lot of things under the hood here. For instance, if we go to scene collection, we can now see that we have different collections for different kinds of objects here. So if you wanna keep this clean, we just keep a camera on a camera, all the geometry under here and lights under here. And we also changed the, the default light from a point light to an area light, which just makes it a bit easier. And it's also a bit bigger as well. I mostly light with area lights. So this just switch, this just saves me some time. We've also enabled the, some, some filters up here as well, such as, the, well, specifically the disable and renders. If you hide something in Blender, it's not gonna hide it from the render by default which is really frustrating because now you might have lights which are hidden, but they're not actually hidden from render view. So this allows us to clearly see what's being rendered. Then we also have enabled some settings for Eevee as well, such as uh, ambient inclusion and screen-based reflections. We do this all the time, so we might as well just change that. We've also been changing the, um, the default animation here from frame starting at frame one to starting at frame 1001. This is a general industry convention, uh, what happens a lot is that you get feedback on your animation where you have to add some pre-roll or maybe you have to just you ha just have to add 30 frames before the first frame. So instead of starting in minus 30 frames, you now just start at like 970. It just makes it really nice and easy. So 1001, 2000 and uh, 1250. We've also just quickly changed here in the modeling viewport. We have disabled um, lights and cameras, which is not needed at all. In the rendering tab, we've also customized this as well to be the actual render view up here. If we just were to enable a little object here we have for you. So here, here we have the render view. So now we have a camera. The camera is also locked to the, the view as well. So if you rotate this around, you can really easily rotate it. We also have the shader editor down here as well. So you can easily see the shaders. And then we have the render here as well. This just makes it really nice and easy. And then we have the outliner up here as well. So this is a very functional render view. We have done something similar for the compositing view where we have the, um, the comped view up here. Then we have our, just some, some quick setup here with a viewer node. So this is gonna look through the viewer node. So if you render something, this is just gonna aut automatically come up here as well. And we have a little 3D view here as well. Essentially all the actions that you would normally have to do every time you're doing something in Blender, that's kind of what we've tried to optimize here. If you go into the rendering view as well, and then we go to the world, you can see that we have a setup for HDRIs as well. So if you want to use HDRIs here, you can simply connect the color to color, open up an HDRI, and then you are good to go. Then you can switch the rotation around of the HDRI just by hitting the set axis here. The reason this is disconnected is because if this is connected with no map, it's just gonna be gloriously pink. So, uh, and when, since we can't really supply you with an HDRI map, we, uh, we're just disconnecting this. Go but get them for free at HDRI Haven or something. Such a good site. And then we're also supplying, we supplying some pre-made materials. This is really handy. If we were to just go to our material here, we can see we have just a few different materials. We have glass, kind of really see the effect because we are in Eevee right now, but <laughs> trust me, it's a glass shader. Then we have a metal breakup. This is one of my favorite materials. Uh, I use this a lot for different things. This is a quick grunge map we put together. And... Uh, it just breaks up a lot of different uh, surfaces very quickly and easily. Then we have a metal bright and metal dark. And then we have a super fancy shiny plastic as well. This, this is not meant to be like an extensive library of materials. This is just so that you can throw some shaders onto your objects qu very quickly just to get some like starting points really. And they're all, they're all different enough and varied in the way that they've been created. So they're really nice for different kinds of look dev. If you're look deving some quick environments and you don't want to have to set up shaders by yourself. The grunge map is also included in the files. You just open it and then everything just works out of the box. 
We're also changing some preferences as well. If you go to edit preferences, we are setting uh, the spacebar action to be searched by default. This is completely personal preference. I just prefer that I can search when I hit the, the space bar. Yeah, like most of the time, let's be realistic, most people probably aren't going to be playing animation play playback in, in, in the viewport. So setting it to search, just you don't have to move your hand as far up to F3, that is. Then on interface as well, we are also disabling the splash screen. No reason to have that on every <laughs> single time. And then if we go to input as well, we can also change the, um, the tablet drag as well. Now, if you're using a tablet, you might want to send this, set this to something like, like one pixel. This just makes your experience with the tablet just a bit better. And then we're going to enable some add-ons. There are some really powerful add-ons, which you, you basically need in Blender. The first one is the Node Wrangler. This is going to add a crazy amount of functionality to Blender. Just to, to anything to do with nodes, if it's a shader editor or if it's a compositor, whatever it might be. Then we have the Pi menu. 3D. This adds a lot of different uh, uh, pie menus here. So for instance, if you were to go into a component here, hit the X key for delete. Now we can, instead of having a list, we can just quickly just delete this, which just makes it really, really handy. And then we're going to be hitting, the, hitting F2 and just search for the F2 add-on. This is amazing for certain kinds of modeling. We're not going to cover what it's doing here. Just know that it's amazing. Then we have loop tools as well. Loop tools allows to gives you some additional functionality when it comes to modeling, such as if you want to add a circle to your models, we have this here and just a just a, a fair bit of extra functionality. Yeah, it's really it's it's through using Blender and and sort of going through with a production mindset what we would need in our everyday really when working with this. So trying to optimize it for that. Then we will also uh, change some hotkeys and some settings regarding hotkeys. If we go to key map, now we can search for delete and if we now were to go down here and we can find object mode so if we see here we have delete we have now just uh, disable confirm which means that you are no longer you no longer have to confirm that you're deleting something you can select an object hit the x key and this just deletes it right away we've also changed the local view which is isolate selected if you're much familiar with that we change the hotkey here to Alt Q, which is a lot more, <laughs> it's a lot easier to work with than the default one. So if you hit Alt Q now, now you can see that it just toggles this. We've also disabled frame selector as well. So now it's not going to move the camera at all. We also set uh, merge to center to be uh, Shift X which allows you to simply just select some polys, an edge, or some verts. And we can now just hit Shift X, and there we go. Yeah, most of the time, most of the time when you're merging something, it's probably going to be to center. But you, I mean, you can always open the menu and, and choose something specific if you wanted to cursor, for example. Then we have a bridge as well. So if we select these two, and then we hit the, the backslash key. This is the one which is right above the left windows key. So all the way to the left. Then we have another one which is really handy. If we go into object view and now we hit control F, now we can just enable and disable wireframe. This is something I used to do all the time. Instead of having to go in here and changing it, uh, you just hit control F. So yeah, you can find all of this in um, in the scene which is being provided to you provided to you in the description this kind of stuff really just makes my life a lot easier it's not a whole lot of reason to going in and changing the area light all the time enabling screen-based reflections switching the timeline adding some materials to it it just it's just so much easier to have it i also just quickly want to show you the the grunge material again because i just think it's really cool <laughs> <laughs> so if we just go into uh, look to view and we set the material here to be the metal breakup. You can just see what it's doing now. It just instantly gives you some really nice breakup. 100% realism. 100% realism. <laughs> Guaranteed. <laughs> One thing as well, which is uh, pretty handy here, is if we go into... Um, if we go into the object mode here, and then we can just quickly add a gamma node to it. Now we can just make this sharper or dollar just by really, really subtly tweak, tweaking the gamma nodes. If you want this to be like a really sharp but really broken up object, you can just set the gamma to something like two. Or if you want to make it like really, really dull, 
you can set it to something like, well, zero. That's very dull. <laughs> <laughs> that is very dull. So yeah, just some um, nice little tips which can can really help you speed up uh, the initial uh, the initial uh, file in Blender. And you can get this for free over on the Flip Normals Marketplace. Just head over, download the file, and I mean you'll be good to go. You can get this all these super shiny, broken up donuts like this. So yeah, let us know if you want to see more videos like this in the future. We love customizing software, and particularly Blender. There's so much power in this. If you have any good tips for what you can add to the scene as well, let us know, and we would love to hear what you have in mind. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and also hit the little notification bell in order to get notified every single time we put out a new video. And if you're interested in professional training or 3D assets, 2D assets, 2D training, whatever it is, trying to advance your career within the CG visual effects or animation industry, make sure to pop over to the Flip Normals Marketplace and grab something from there.